Hey guys, welcome back. So this is not your typical list where someone's telling you to stay loyal to your essay, or to buy fine jewelry, ready to wear, or homeware to get bags. But this is my Hermes shopping do's and don'ts. And stay tuned until the last don't because it's a little controversial and I want to hear from you guys if it actually works from your experiences. So for the first Hermes do is to check out men's scarves, especially their cashmere scarves. So the men's cashmere scarves are so much cheaper than the women's cashmere scarves. I think it's about 580 Canadian versus 1000 to 1500. But to be fair, the men's scarves are a little bit shorter and the women's are more like a shawl or a blanket, which is good if you like bulky scarves. So I actually prefer scarves that are a little bit slimmer and the ones for men are really thick as well. And some of the designs, I'll put them on the screen, I think are very unisex and sometimes even a little feminine. Feminine. So I think they're incredible options to buy and it helps you increase your categories for spending at Hermes And we all know that adding menswear definitely helps your chances at getting a bag as well because it diversifies your purchase history So I absolutely love the Verso scarves where there's two colors on each side buy one get one free hells Yeah, and I love their summer muffler the cream white with their light gray stripe I actually love that scarf So I think the men's scarves are absolutely worth it and they're great pre-spend items as well as great value for money. So Hermes don't number one is don't buy the things that you don't love to try to get a bag. So Hermes is expensive and the game is draining enough as it is and it's even worse if you don't even like the things that you're buying. Also, it'd be harder to show the essay that you love the brand when you're not excited about their things or don't have specific items that you found that you want them to get for you. If that is indeed the case and you're not interested in any of other Hermes items, only their bags, then possibly reseller route is a better option because you know for sure you'll get a bag. But just try and look around in the store, look at what they have to offer. Hermes does indeed make a lot of beautiful, high quality, understated things, and you might be surprised at what you'll find. And honestly, H is quite a slippery slope once you start looking. So the second Hermes do is to try leathers other than Epsom leather. So Epsom leather is actually the most common Hermes leather and it's the equivalent of the Prada Safiano leather or every luxury brand has their version of Safiano or stamp leather and I honestly think that it's the least luxurious H leather and the least unique as well. So while Epsom is scratch resistant and water resistant, it can lose bits of its color when it's scraped up against something and it's a lot harder to repair for example if the shape got warped or if it got accidentally sat on or something like that. And Epsom for the Cellier Kellys are incredibly stiff and restrictive and really hard to get into the bag. Hermes has so many different types of beautiful leather, so definitely explore them. I know that aside from the fan favorites of Togo, Clemence, Chev is also a great leather that's very durable. And honestly, now that I've owned my Swift Constance, I can't really go back to Epsom Constances anymore because Epsom Constances look a little plasticky, they look almost toy-like. The Swift Constance just gives it a really luxurious feel and it's just so soft and supple. So definitely try out all of Hermes's leather because that's part of the fun of Hermes. So Hermes don't number two is don't buy the trendy or the popular bags such as the Birkin 25 or the Mini Kelly or even the Kelly 28 Cellier if you know it won't fit you or your lifestyle. So just because it's the it bag doesn't mean that it'll work for everyone. The Birkin 25 is actually tiny in person and it photographs a lot bigger than it actually is and it really isn't for everyone. If you're very tall, the bag can look a little toy-like and because the handle is so slim, it's really not going to fit very well on the crook of the arm. It most likely will be just a handheld bag. Also, even the Kelly 28 in the Cellier style, I know it's known as the universal one size fit all, the perfect size Kelly for everyone, but it really isn't. For me, I'm about 5'4". That bag was the one that I thought would be my first bag, but I was actually offered that bag in Paris in Rose Azalee in Cellier. And the Kelly 28 initially, because you know, you're like, oh my gosh, it's a Kelly. You're like, yeah, this will work. But then if you actually try it on a lot more, especially if you're petite, if you're slimmer, or if you gravitate towards smaller bags, the Kelly 28 Cellier can be quite large and boxy, especially when worn on the shoulder. It, it just, it hangs too low and it's just too large and it's just not not flattering. I think the Kelly 25 is more proportional and is a much better everyday bag compared to a Kelly 28 for those of us that are more petite, more slim, or gravitate towards smaller bags. So the third Hermes do is to get your husband or significant other to ask for the Birkins and Kellys for you. So men tend to get better offers because historically speaking, as sexist as it sounds, men tend to have the spending power and when they go shopping, they usually have the money to drop. 
Also, it's a very romantic gesture. The, the concept of a man surprising and gifting his wife with an Hermes bag to show his love, right? And also, female essays tend to be more receptive to men and vice versa. Hermes don't number three is don't be pushy and argumentative with your essay. So there's the saying, it's easier to catch flies with honey than with vinegar, which means it's easier to get what you want by being polite than being rude. However, being kind doesn't mean being a pushover. Set your limits, be firm but gentle, know when to say no, and as always, be respectful and keep the mood light. The fourth Hermes do is to buy Hermes shoes. So I think that Hermes shoes are a good pre-spend category because if you think about it, there's a lower chance that a reseller is gonna buy a specific size shoes to fit their feet because it's gonna be harder to sell. So if you're buying a pair of shoes, most likely you're buying it to keep it for yourself. And also, if you look at how expensive the Hermes markup can be, for example, for the Hermes fine jewelries or for the watches, whereas designer shoes tend to be priced around the same, so the price markup is not too crazy. And some of their softer leathers like Chev make for really comfortable shoes as well. Hermes don't number four is don't spend more than you can afford. So Hermes is a slippery slope and it's easy to go overboard if you're not careful. So make sure you set a budget and set a limit to how much you can realistically spend, whether that's pre-spend or annual spend, and then strategize from there. So for most places, it's at least a one-to-one -one pre spend before you're offered a bag. So space out the purchases to make sure that you maximize the building the relationship with your essay and buy in strategic categories that's going to be better help your chances at getting a bag. So for the Hermes do number five is to buy purse inserts for your slouchier and light colored bags to protect the interior and to help maintain its shape. So because the Hermes spa does not repair the inside of the bag, having an insert in the bag really helps protect the inside and also for some of the slouchier bags if you're like me and tend to like your bags more structured or hold its shape for as long as possible, the inserts are going to help you do that. So I use 7RP for my Birkin 25. I like how the insert is firm enough to hold the shape yet fits snugly without putting unwanted pressure anywhere in the bag. The quality also feels nice and I love the minimalistic design. I just got my Mai Tai insert for my Lindy and it holds the fortune cookie shape well from what I can tell. So Hermes don't number five is don't buy the Hermes Furby insert slash organizer. So the reason for that is that the Hermes insert is actually incredibly expensive. I think it's more than $500, which is more expensive than the 7RP inserts where it's handmade by one artisan in France with really great materials and actually keeps the shape of the bags. The Furby insert, by itself is already quite slouchy so it's not going to do much i think to hold the shape of the bag sure it'll be good for protecting the interior but honestly for that price i'd rather get the 7rp one instead Hermes do number six is to be patient. So H is one of those things where patience really pays off in terms of waiting for the exact spec of the bag or the exact item that you're looking for and not to get persuaded or sidetracked otherwise. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how rare or how popular something is, if you don't truly love it for yourself, you're not going to use it and get the wear out of it. All right, so the last and final Hermes don't, and this one, like I said, is a little controversial. So leave me a comment in down below with your experience and whether maybe this actually works and I'm just not aware of it. But my last don't is don't even bother asking other people for their essay information to try to score a bag. Okay, hear me out with the reasons though. So reason number one is that this would only work if you're assuming that nice and helpful essays that offer bags are going to be nice and helpful and offer everyone bags, which is just not realistic because they only have limited amount of bags to offer. And if they're offering everyone bags, then it's not fair to the other essays. And I'm sure they have a limited number that they can offer to their clients. So I don't think that this would work. And for reason number two is that essay relationships are all very personal. An essay that likes you might not like the next person. So you might be bonding on mutual experiences like they might have lived in the same country that you did or they might have similar personalities to you and that clicked. So just because they're a great essay to one person does not mean that you'll get the same treatment. The only exception to this rule, I would think, is if you're asking for the essay contact where someone that's really close friend of yours or a close family member is recommending you personally to their longtime essay. I think that might work. So in terms of my experience with this, so I'm not sure if you guys know about Julia Picard's YouTube channel she scored two Kellys in her trip to Paris and I watched that video as well. I think she got lucky in Lyon 
and she shared her essay's name on Instagram because her essay actually said that was okay. So I actually followed her essay and I messaged her on Instagram before my trip to France where we were gonna make a trip to Lyon anyway. And she, even though the essay posted stories about all the bags and all the dreams that she helped everyone fulfill, when I messaged her and just kind of said, hey, can I book an appointment with you to shop? There was no response. So even if the essay is open to having their contact information shared, I don't think they're gonna be receptive to everyone and I don't think you're gonna have the same luck as someone that has been successful through building a relationship with them all right guys so that's it for this video I know it's a little controversial these are just my personal Hermes do's and don'ts from my experience shopping at the boutiques let me know what your don'ts and what your do's are and whether you agree or disagree in the comment section down below I pretty much respond to all the comments so hope you guys like the video and I'll see you guys in the next one bye